I hope you guys missed me as much as I missed you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for what is going to be nothing short of another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update with yours. Truly, as always, we have a hell of a lot to get into, and we have been absent for the past three days. We took a little bit of downtime. We took really advantage of the downtime that we are seeing in the markets. Take a bit of a break and hopefully come back a little bit refreshed and ready to take on what is an ever volatile time in the cryptocurrency markets. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video, ladies and gents. We're going to be starting things off with the rumor mill. Now, over the past three days, during my absence, there has been rumors that China are set to unban Bitcoin or lift the ban on crypto. Now, I am skeptic. I think that if you look at China, um, they're very much about control and control of their citizens. Uh, and a big part of that is the currency that they use. The US does it as well, perhaps not as blatantly. Um, however, this leads me to be very skeptical on this, but we'll be looking at the rumor all the same. Justin Sun tweeting this. Of course, we had uh, news a month ago or so that Galaxy Digital CEO Mike Novogratz said a similar thing. We'll be looking at where all this has came from. Then we're going to be diving over to a very interesting rumor that undoubtedly is going to have ramifications for the cryptocurrency space. And actually, in a case, a potentially positive one, and that is that Kamila Harris, um, who, of course, is the opposition to Donald Trump, may be considering Gary Gensler as Treasury Secretary if elected as president. And this is accorded to Senate sources. Now, on the surface, this seems horrific. Gary Gensler is the arch nemesis of the cryptocurrency space. He has been, in my opinion, shambolic in his approach to this market. He's really tried to grab as much power as possible for the SEC, which of course is an agency of the United States, the Security and Exchange Commission. However, if he gets away from that role, that means he isn't going to be um, penalizing the crypto market in the manner that he has been because he won't be in charge of that anymore. He'll actually be in charge of debt and of course the Treasury, which of course Janet Yellen current hold, currently holds that seat. And this is what he's always been gunning for. So we'll be diving into that. We're also going to be looking at Eric Balanchunas's um, opinions on this. Of course, you've got Rep Emma commenting on this also and talking about how this is largely going to be a disaster. And then we're going to be doing what we usually do on Monday, which is where we look at CoinShares digital fund flows. And actually, we did see inflows again for the second week in a row. However, rather interestingly, we saw record outflows for Solana. Now, this is interesting because Solana, of course, have pending ETFs. And is this preparation for them? We'll be talking about that, of course. Uh, then we're going to be looking at some interesting things in regards to institutions continue to pile their stockpiles of crypto. Whether that be the ETPs that look very bullish, the exchange traded products that have baskets of cryptos in them outside of the United States, whether that be the uh, IBIT or the um, uh, Bitcoin ETFs, the Ethereum ETFs, BlackRock continue to add we also had news that um, MetaPlanet also added another staggering amount of Bitcoin. We're also seeing a little bit of a resurgence in regards to DeFi, and then we'll be finishing things off with Bitcoin's price action. So it's good to be back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hoping you guys missed me just as much as I missed you. And let's get into what was a pretty significant rumor that was circulating over the prior three days. Now, this, I believe, broke on the 18th, and just in sun sparks rumors of China lifting its ban on crypto. A recent tweet by Tron founder Justin Sun has sparked a new rumor that China might lift its ban on crypto. Tron, Tron, Tron. I think Tron's a dark horse for this market. Um, I actually think Tron's going to do rather well between me and you. Um, but for another video entirely, and we can speculate on why that is. Uh, certainly when you look at it on an on-chain point of view, very impressive. Um, and many of you are going to be outraged that I said that, but do a little bit of digging and you'll see what I'm talking about. But that's not what we're here to discuss. On August the 18th, Sun tweets, China unbans crypto. What's the best meme for this? Now, we have previously heard rumors from the likes of Mike Novogratz, the Lunar King, um, that he heard reports that China could unban Bitcoin in late 2024. Now, that would be just a bull narrative that the cryptocurrency market needs right now to get Bitcoin out of its current correction that is very much a correction in what is a broader uptrend. The altcoin market has really just given way to the tide that is Bitcoin. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one of the most prosperous 
times ahead of us in regards to investors in the cryptocurrency market, certainly the altcoin market. And everything is aligning. I'm about to do a meeting later on today on my Patreons where I'm going to be reaffirming the plan that is very much playing out. The altcoin market exactly where it should be in regards to the cyclical cycles of crypto. And what's to come is going to blow many people's minds. It's going to be a fruitful time, guys, and I don't want anybody to miss that opportunity. But of course, always do your own research and due diligence. So this is just a rumor. I'm skeptical whether China, just to throw my hat in the ring, would actually consider unbanning Bitcoin because Bitcoin is not under their control. And actually, we've seen that certainly from a technology point of view, and it makes sense, actually, China and the West has this kind of uh, technology battle going on. And, and, and one reason that certainly the United States is powerful is directly due to its companies. It's why China don't allow this, why we don't allow Chinese companies largely in the West. Um, because the, the, the data and information that can be gathered there. I'm reading a book by a guy called Norbert Wiener who wrote this book in the 1950s called The Human Use of Human Beings. And it tackles the interaction between machines and humans and information. Um, and it's very much going to shape the world that we're moving towards. But I don't want to go into that deep topic of cybernetics. Um, I'm very skeptical whether China would actually allow perhaps a free agent in the form of a store of value such as Bitcoin. Um Certainly something they can't control and thus derive power as a result of. Um, so very skeptical on that rumor. Some interesting news circulating very, very recently is that just in, this is from Watcher Guru, Camilla Harris is considering Gary Gensler as Treasury Secretary if elected president, according to Senate sources. Now, Gary Gensler is the arch nemesis of the cryptocurrency space. Surely it's going to be a very detrimental thing that he would be put in charge of the Treasury. Well, it would mean that he wouldn't be in, in, in charge of the cryptocurrency market anymore, which the SEC think they have jurisdiction over, although we found from lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit that this perhaps is not the case. Now, in regards to this election coming up, this is going to perhaps be one of the most important election elections, certainly of my lifetime, potentially of many of yours. Now, again, to throw my hat in the ring, which some of you may not like, and I always get this comment. They, people always say to me, you're not American, you can't have an opinion. Well... If you had a heart attack, would you first ask the surgeon who was performing on you if he had had a heart attack? And if he gave you the answer, no, you wouldn't allow him to perform that surgery. I think it was Milton Friedman that used that argument in regards to people saying, I can't remember what the topic was. I think he was talking about um, uh, people on a certain benefit. And, and, and they said to him, well, how can you talk on this? You're not on that benefit. And he said, well, I don't need to be. You know, most heart surgeons haven't had heart attacks. They still operate on people that have and understand that topic. And I'm, I'm not the biggest, I have to admit here, guys, I've given that whole spiel. I'm, I'm not the biggest sort of uh, diver into American politics. I follow it loosely. It's my opinion that I think Trump is more likely to win than Harris. However, she is certainly doing rather well in a number of different polls, uh, and I think has a lot more of a chance than many people were giving her. But her appointing Gary Gensler, which of course is going to have ramifications for the cryptocurrency space, I think potentially, okay, let's say this scenario did play out. There's lots of ifs and buts here. And that would mean that he wouldn't be in charge of the uh, cryptocurrency markets anymore. But that also means that, you know, certainly he's been enabled by the current regime um, that you could have a similar kind of um, shark to him put in his place. Um, but this would certainly get him out of the way of the cryptocurrency market. But he'd then be in charge of uh, the Treasury. And I, I actually think people are very much, well, certainly the the party that he belongs to or is, is is enabled by, give him a lot of credit. I don't think he deserves that credit. I think he's done an unbelievably bad job of regulating the cryptocurrency markets. In fact, he's not protected investors from anything. The only beneficiary of the Luna situation was the SEC that got paid a fine as a result of it. It didn't protect people from FTX or any of the other things. This is from Eric Valentunas. Lawsuits all over the place. Rep Emma on what life under Treasury Secretary Gary Gensler would be like. He also thinks Warren could be picked too. Oof. Oh, it's kind, um, it's kind of sounds like he's the source of the rumors via Washington rep. So this has come from obviously a senator source or a Senate source. Now it could be Emma, who actually has been very good for crypto. I like Tom. Um, but in an interview with reporter rep Emma previously warned that Harris may pick Gensler or Senator Elizabeth Warren. Ugh very anti-crypto both of them, to serve as Treasury Secretary. Such a move, he cautioned, would be disastrous for the economy. Go on, Emma. Gensler. Emma said, has been bringing lawsuits all over the place and losing all over the place. He has got his behind handed to him. Uh, that time's passed. Gary Gensler needs to move on 
his career in government should be over. I happen to agree. I actually didn't realize Gensler used to work for the Secretary of Treasury under Clinton. While some shooting down rumors, this is possible. He's clearly qualified, although obviously uh, a lot of baggage too. <laughs> uh, that said, I could totally see this as a made-up rumor. If you were a Republican and you wanted to help shore up the crypto vote, hard to think of anything more powerful than giving people the uh, visuals of Gensler having even more power, even if true. So yes, I do agree. This is a rumor. This is why we started with the rumor mill. China and ban Bitcoin kind of doesn't seem that likely. Uh, and of course, Gensler to become the Treasury Secretary after the appalling job he's done in the cryptocurrency space. It could be very much a tactic by the opposition, uh, certainly to, 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 to garner that crypto vote. And both parties have really came out for crypto. My two cents is that Trump's more bullish for the crypto markets than Harris. And I think if you were voting solely on crypto, he would be the uh, obvious choice. Um, however, there's a lot to play out. Certainly him appearing at, you know, the Bitcoin conferences and things like this. You know, he, he kind of seems to very much get it. Um, I think Trump is brilliant at what he does in regards to a political campaigner. Um, he wouldn't have already won and, 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 and be in the position he's in uh, if not. Let's do what we typically do on a Monday, but it is now Tuesday, and look at some of CoinShares digital asset fund flows. Now, despite the price action that you're seeing in the altcoin market and the cryptocurrency space generally, as Bitcoin decides to trend downwards, um, not trend downwards, this isn't a trend, the, the broader trend is an uptrend, but certainly pull back. If you put altcoins on here, they've just sold off to more of a degree than Bitcoin. However, they will overperform Bitcoin when it starts to sort of rear its head and we get that momentum back behind the cryptocurrency space. Retail isn't here, ladies and gents. Retail is non-existent. And you can get that via every metric you possibly can. You can even get that by gas fees on Ethereum being at record lows. You can get that on Google searches, the largest search engine in the world, predominantly where people are going to go and search crypto. You can get that from myself at YouTube. Um, obviously, um, you know, we get some of the largest or the most watched content in regards to certain topics. 10 to 20K is a good bid in terms of viewership. It's 2.1 billion people watch YouTube. The masses are not here yet, but institutions certainly are. Now, we did see inflows overall totaling 30 million. But Solana suffered its largest outflows on record. Now, let's dive straight into this because you can see what was the actual official number for the outflows? Um, $39 million in Solana outflows. Now, on the surface of this, this doesn't seem too great. However, if you think about what's currently going on with Solana, they are about to have an ETF launch. And is this people taking their capital out ready to invest it in the ETF. And once you get Solana, the, the, the floodgates will open. We already have, I think it's Hashdex applying for um, a Bitcoin, um, sorry, a crypto index. Bitcoin, Ethereum, of course, listed, but the in their kind of write-up, they said, look, we will add more uh, altcoins once clarity has been given. We know that institutions are and continue to invest. This is uh, BlackRock's um, iShares. Uh, they keep stacking Bitcoin. You know, they're very quickly, I think they're just below Binance. Um, they'll be on, I think they'll end up with more Bitcoin than Satoshi by the time this is done. It's very much an institutional takeover. We also have news that MetaPlanet has purchased an additional <clears throat> 57,000, or oh, sorry, 57 Bitcoin, sorry, not 57,000. I was about to say, wow, that's unbelievable. Um, we continue to see, it's about uh, 3.5 billion yuan, um, we continue to see MetaPlanet and, and, and other large companies around the world sort of Bitcoin eyes. Maybe we should have Michael Saylor as the treasury. Now, I don't actually, th I think that would genuinely be detrimental because what happens to those people that don't hold Bitcoin? Um, you know, as, as, I want Bitcoin to win, even though I'm skeptical of its origins and the real intent behind it. Um, and I think we should question that. There are people that don't own Bitcoin, right? And more of them than there are us. Um and I don't know if Bitcoinerizing is, is you, 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 it introduces many problems. It solves many problems at the same time, but we, we, we don't live, you know, Nirvana is not for this world. So we continue to see institutions continue to accumulate. Also in regards to DeFi, this is from Arthur, um, who's the founder and CIO of uh, uh, DeFi Capital, one I'm not familiar with, but is DeFi back? After being pushed aside by other narratives, there are signs that DeFi reassurance is going on. Let's take a look. First up, uh, mind share for DeFi in general has been on a three month uptrend close to doubling in percent from seven to 14 since the start of the year. I truly believe that smart money is positioning right now, along with us, um, because the masses are not here yet. We are here. 
we have the insight to lock into the cryptocurrency market at a time when nobody else wants to, but they will come. And if you look at any market cycles, public participation is a big part of the up leg. That still isn't here yet. And you can get that from any metrics. He looks at a number of things. Actually, it was a very good thread. Um, but we shall see. I do. My personal opinion is there are far larger narratives out there than 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 than, than DeFi. And actually, I think I'm more bullish on things like Deepin AI, decentralized AI. We're going to start doing a lot more videos on Deepin because it seems kind of gimmicky because you're giving it a Deepin kind of name, decentralized physical infrastructure. But Bitcoin is decentralized physical infrastructure. And what we're doing, what this movement really is about, is more than Bitcoin. We figured out how to. Uh, solve an issue of a store of value and money with potentially money. I don't think Bitcoin is a practical money um, with a distributed ledger. But you can apply that to basically anything, anything that needs a ledger, anything that needs an accounting system, anything that that that, that um, you can apply a distributed ledger to, you can solve issues with. And actually, the infrastructure that makes up the internet, which is arguably the most important technology we've ever come across, um, it enables AI. It's a foundation for everything. Certainly, the singularity that is coming is... Um, perhaps as important as money itself. And, and and this is a huge narrative and certainly decentralized AI is of the utmost importance. Um, we'll do a video later on today or, or, or in the week where we talk about the crossovers between uh, AI and, 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 and distributed ledgers because it really solves many problems. To finish things off on a little bit of price action, we re- it's, it's the, Bitcoin's the star of the show. We need to get back above certainly the 30 weekly moving average, break out of this sort of descending, um, broadening structure that I do believe we're in. Uh, we've got a bull flag target taking us above 100 we've got that big inverse head and shoulders target taking us to 151 the stage is set guys it's just a case of being in it to win it i do think bitcoin is going to rear its head you know we've really been getting quite aggressive on certain bitcoin miners and if you want to find out about them become a patreon but on that note i'm going to love and leave you guys it's good to be back with each and every one of you and we will see you in tomorrow's daily market update if you're not already a subscriber please do consider becoming one and a massive thank you guys we crossed 90,000 subs yesterday We've got live streams on the horizon. We've got upgraded interviews incoming and everything in between. All in Crypto will become your one-stop shop when it comes to the cryptocurrency space. That's it from me, guys. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.